Writing net ionic equations is an important skill to review as we're moving through equilibrium. We use this a great deal when we're looking at solubility equilibrium and at acid-base equilibrium. So why do we write net ionic equations? Of course, the is to indicate the species that are really involved in the chemical reaction, which allows us to focus on the most important chemical species. For example, I could write this reaction. I have a solution of barium chloride and a solution of sodium sulfate. This has to be a precipitation reaction if we get a reaction at all. It's an ion swap reaction and it's not an acid and base. So we need to think about whether we will actually form a solid product. And here are a few rules that are important to remember to help us figure that out. One, all group 1A, the alkali metals, so like lithium and sodium and potassium, all group 1A salts and all ammonium salts are soluble. So if I see these cations, I automatically know it should dissolve. And in terms of anions, there's a lot, but these are the two really important ones. All nitrate salts are always soluble. All acetate salts are always soluble. And in fact, we've actually seen what happens when barium reacts with sulfate. It was in our conductivity titration. If you remember, we made a barium sulfate precipitate when we did our titration. So let's balance this and identify the precipitate. First, right now it is not balanced, so, oh, there it is. We know that sodium chloride not only is it a group one cation, but also it's table salt. We know that dissolves in water. And from our previous experience, we know this forms a precipitate. Also, if there's a reaction, we need to form a solid product. And that's our only option. What we want to do now is to write a total ionic equation. And there's some things that we want to remember here. There are a couple that are really relevant right now. All soluble ionic materials, things that dissolve, are written as their separate ions, followed by the AQ to show that they are dissolved in water. All strong acids and bases completely dissociate, and so they will be written as their individual ions, followed by aqueous. And all insoluble solids will be written with the S following their formula, and they will be written together. So our barium sulfate precipitate will be written as BASO4 with the solid to indicate that it's our precipitate. So let's go ahead and use these rules to rewrite our equation. We'll notice that the two sodium ions on sodium sulfate are now two separate sodium ions. The two chloride ions in barium chloride, they do not stay together. They dissociate as two completely separate chloride ions. And we notice that there are then the two separate sodium ions here, two separate chloride ions here, because both of the, the sodium chloride is soluble. And our barium sulfate solid is written together with the S to indicate it is our precipitate. A couple of other quick things that we'll see in a total ionic equation. Covalent compounds are written as their formula. So one example you'll often see here is water. Water is just written as H2O liquid. Weak acids and bases are written as their formula because they will only slightly dissociate in water. So most of the weak acid and base will still have the H attached, for example, for a weak acid. If I look back at my equation I just wrote, the sodium and the chloride ions are both unchanged and present on both sides. Two aqueous sodiums in the reactants, two aqueous sodiums in the product, two aqueous chlorides in the reactant, two aqueous chlorides in the product. Nothing really happened to these. Since they didn't really undergo any kind of chemical reaction, 
they are referred to as spectator ions. And remember, spectator ions are what we are trying to get rid of in our net ionic equation. So if I take the sodium and chloride ions out, I get my net ionic equation. This really is what happens in the chemistry. The sodium ions and the chloride ions are going to go right down the drain with the filtrate when I, if I filtered out this precipitate. This lets me focus on what's really important. So let's do another quick example here. I'm going to take a double replacement or ion swap reaction where I have aqueous potassium iodide and lead nitrate solution, so that's also aqueous. If I write the balanced chemical equation here, I have two Ki's reacting with a lead nitrate. That's going to form two potassium nitrates and a lead iodide. I need to figure out which one of these is going to be my precipitate. Well, remember the rules that we just talked about. If I look at potassium nitrate, it has a group one cation in it, and I know those are always soluble. It also has a nitrate ion in it, and I know all nitrate salts are soluble. So it is certainly not going to be a potassium nitrate precipitate. That means that the lead iodide has to be my precipitate, my lead to iodide. And once I see that, I can actually use that because I know that's going to be the product of my net ionic equation. So I can kind of work backwards from my precipitate and find the net ionic equation. If the lead iodide solid is my product, then what had, did I have to put in from up here? Well, I had to put in the lead two plus ion that started out aqueous, and I had to put in two I minus ions from the two Ki. You really do have to check and make sure that your net ionic equation is still balanced. For acid-base reactions, you really do need to know the list of strong acids. There it is, memorize them. And the list of strong bases, the group one alkali metal hydroxides and calcium strontium and barium hydroxides. If you know the strong acids and strong bases, if it's not on the list, it's gonna have to be a weak acid or weak base. And the nice thing about all strong acids and bases is that they all have the same net ionic equation. The H from the acid meets the OH from the hydroxide and forms water, liquid water. For a weak acid and base, we're going to have a very similar situation, but weak acids and bases are written as their formula. HF was not on the list of strong acids, so HF is a weak acid. Sodium hydroxide, however, is a strong base. So if I break this up into its total ionic equation, HF will stay together because it is weak. NaOH will break up because it is strong. NaF is aqueous, so it breaks up into the sodium ion and the fluoride ion and water, a molecular compound, is written as its formula. So I look for my spectator ions, and there's really only one here. The sodium ion on both sides is aqueous and plus one. So the net ionic equation is everything without that spectator ion. The HF aqueous plus the hydroxide ion aqueous forms the fluoride ion and water. The other times we will see net ionic equations, we will see them for redox reactions. And one thing to always look at is if the charges change, it better be in the net ionic equation. For a single replacement redox reaction, 
we just remove the spectator ion. Here's a classic single replacement reaction. If I put an iron nail into a solution of copper sulfate, eventually I will find the iron nail loses mass because it forms iron sulfate, which dissolves, but I will also see that brown shiny copper metal being formed. If I break that up into its total ionic equation, I see two things which stay the same on both sides, those sulfate ions. And so I just remove the spectator ion. The iron changes charge, so it's there on both sides. The copper changes charge, so it's there on both sides. One thing to remember is that writing redox reactions from a half reaction, you're really already working with the net ionic equation. Remember our redox titration. We had this reaction that we used to do the stoichiometry. Well, the manganese solution wasn't just permanganate ions floating around, it was potassium permanganate. And you see there's no potassium ion here because it's a spectator ion. It's been removed. The iron salt in our unknown was part of iron sulfate. And again, I don't see the sulfate ion here because the sulfate ion is a spectator and it's already been removed. My products here would have been things like manganese sulfate, but the sulfate is just two minus an aqueous. So it's been left out. This is already a net ionic equation. So in fact, I could find the spectator ions by looking for things that don't show up here. And the other thing that we will do a great deal coming up in solubility equilibrium is writing the equation for dissolving. And big thing to think about here is that this has to be balanced. I take my ionic solid and I break it up into its separate ions. For example, this very soluble potassium nitrate compound breaks up into one potassium and one nitrate. But something like lead nitrate, which is absolutely soluble because of that nitrate ion, breaks up into a lead two plus, but it has two nitrate ions. They do not stay together. They are two separate dissociated ions. And one thing I keep bringing up and people keep making mistakes about is this absolutely does affect the molarity of my solution. If I have a 0.1 molar solution of lead nitrate, it is 0.1 molar lead ions. But because there are two nitrates for every one of these lead nitrate molecule formula units, my molarity is not 0.1 molar for nitrate. It is 0.2 molar for nitrate. I have to pay attention to these stoichiometric ratios. Here are our quick things we need to make sure of when we write net ionic equations. Net ionic equations have ions in them. If there are no species with charge, then you are doing something wrong. It has the word ionic in it. Make sure that there are ions and the ions have the correct charges. Net ionic equations absolutely must have the state of matter. If I don't put the solid on my precipitate or the liquid on my water, how am I even justifying that, this, that there was a chemical change? Net ionic equations also, like all chemical equations, must be balanced. You have to have, pay attention to the ratios in your formulas and make sure that they work out. And those are the three biggest things we really have to look for when we write net ionic equations. They should have charges, they always have states of matter, and they always need to balance.